Hello folks, this is Mike and this is a wind spinner and this is what it does. Look at it go in that wind. Now I just made this from scrap wood and a few dollars in hardware and they make good gifts and you can even sell them in craft fairs and it's a great beginner project. So stay with me and I'm going to show you how to build it. Now as you can see it all folds down flat and these are just 3 8 inch by 3 quarter inch uh, strips of wood and they're cut into this pattern. It's all held together by a central one quarter inch all thread rod like this. Now this one is 24 inches. I'll have to cut it down to 18 inches to fit this. On each end of the rod you're going to have a nylon inserted one quarter inch nut and washer. Okay. Now here I've left uh, about three quarters of the shaft showing. And that's so I can drill a hole in it and put a hanger on it. And to hang it, I'm using a, uh, I think this is a 3 8 inch split ring. And this is a barrel swivel. This comes from the fishing department. The split ring you can get in the jury making department uh, in the craft section. And that's at Walmart where I bought these or probably any craft store. And the hardware came from Home Depot. Now on this end, this end is big enough that you can put a small S hook through it and hang it from a chain or twine or whatever you want to do. Now of course this barrel swivel will allow it to spin freely uh, without binding or kinking in the wind. So I mark the off thread at 18 inches and I cut it down to size with my hacksaw. Then I drilled a 7 64th inch hole in the end. Now remember to drill it near the edge so that your hardware will fit better. Next I slightly bevel the edges on my grinder and then tested it to make sure that my nut would thread up. Now to make a duplicate of this wind spinner you're going to need to cut 42 3 8 inch by 3 quarter inch pieces. Now our maximum width here is 7 and a half inches and we're going to taper down to about 4 inches on each end. So the strips we cut will range in length from 8 inches on down to about 5 inches and that's to allow for trimming room. I set the table saw fence for 3 eighths of an inch. Now this is just my shop scrap. But we're going to make repeated cuts until we get enough lumber to make up that 42 pieces we need. Now this is going to take a while so while we're doing this please take the opportunity to go below and like our video. And for more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe and to ring that notification bell. The next step will be to go to my miter saw and then we'll cut these to length. You can either measure and mark your strips and then cut them accordingly. Or you can set a stop at 8 inches on your miter saw and then make repeated cuts. But remember, uh, we'll be able to use pieces 4 inches and up, so be sure to save the leftovers. These are the 8 inch pieces. So I took my combo square, set it for 4 inches, and I'm going to mark the center. I'll do one for the drill press first, and then I'll do an extra one so that we can do it with a hand drill. So now on the drill press, you notice I put a blue piece of tape here. And what I did was I made a mark, hope you can see that, at the very center of the drill bit. Okay. Now I've set my fence so that I can cut a hole exactly in the center of this board. And I'm using a 5 16 inch drill bit, which will give us a little bit of wiggle room for our 1 quarter inch all thread. So I'm going to center that. I made my mark. That's the center mark we just made. And I'm going to center that right there. And set my fence. Okay. Now I can make repeating cuts. Now we can cut all of our 8 inch pieces and we don't have to mark any of these now because we have the fence set. Now these are my shorter cutoff pieces and what I'm trying to do with my cutoffs is cut a number of them to the same length so I can make repeating cuts. And the same process. I just line it up, set my fence, and I can make four or five repeating cuts now. 
So now let's do it freehand, just with a hand drill, okay? Now, what I've done is I found the center point, okay, and you'll have to do this for each board. And I'm actually going to tap a punch right in the middle. That's important because that will keep your drill bit from walking on you. And here again, I'm just using a hand drill with a 5 16 inch bit. And the important thing here is that you keep your drill as vertical as possible. If your holes are slanted, they're not going to thread up good with that rod when we put it all together. There we go. And just think, all you have to do is do this 42 times. <laughs> Next I'm going to sand them to remove the pencil marks and the imperfections. Since they're going to be in the weather, I decided to seal each piece. Now these will need to dry overnight. I'm using Thompson's weather seal here, but any exterior fence sealer will do. I've let the sealer cure overnight, and now we can go ahead and put them on our all-thread rod. And we're going to start with the longest pieces, and those are going to go in the very middle. Then we're going to taper down in size toward both the bottom and the top. So your shortest pieces will be on each end. Just like the original, I ended up with 42 pieces. Just be sure to leave enough space at each end for your hardware. Now we need to lay out our cuts. Um, make a mark on each end centered right in the middle of the off thread, right over that. And then extend that line with a straight edge and a light pencil line. As you can see, I only marked about four or five inches in the middle. Now measure the length of the wood parts, divide by two, and mark the center of the assembly. Now line up across the center and make a mark on each side about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Now you can eyeball this by using the joint lines for reference. Also make marks in both directions with your straight edge so that you have an intersection. In other words, you should have a plus sign on both sides. Using the center line on each end, I made a mark uh, two inches in each direction from center, which of course will give us our four inch width on each end. Now I'm going to connect the bottom mark to the center intersection, and then I'm going to go around the board until all of them are marked. Now I'm going to attach my hardware, and I probably should have done this before I did the layout process. Uh, but we're going to put a quarter inch nut and washer on each end and tighten. Just make sure that that hole we drill will be showing and it will be clear of the nut and washer assembly. So we can attach things to it. And you'll need a 7 16 inch socket or nut driver here. So now I've clamped the whole assembly to my table. And we're going to cut this off. And to do that, I'm just going to use my saber saw. And in conjunction with my saber saw, I'm going to use a cutoff guide. Unfortunately, uh, this one's messed up, so I can't use it. So I can show you how to make this real quick. It just takes a few minutes. So now I'm going to take this old jig apart, and I'm going to clamp the 2-inch wide top piece to a new bottom piece. This one's about 4 inches wide. Now I'm going to attach the two together with screws. Now we can clamp it to the table and we'll cut off the excess, making sure that you keep your saw fence firmly pushed against that top piece. And if you do that, the bottom piece is going to be cut perfectly straight and flush with the saw blade. Now, all I have to do is line this edge up on our line. And I want this end to be right in the intersection there. So now we can carefully clamp it in place. Now I can cut it off. And there's our shape. All we have to do now is install the hardware. Now what I forgot to mention earlier, if you have a barrel swivel like this and it's got a round end, you can actually put that right through your hole and you won't need the swivel. Okay? But if yours comes to a point, you'll need the swivel because it won't thread through the hole. Now, this is the hardest part of the whole project, is getting these little rings on here. And after some fumbling around, I discovered that I could spread it open and hold it with some needle nose pliers first, and then slip the end through the hole, and then spin it on, and that really worked. 
Next, we slip on our barrel swivel and then just snap it shut. And I'm going to use an S hook to attach the barrel swivel to the chain. And if you want to, you can always use needle nose pliers and close the ends so nothing can slip off. So now, what we need to do is loosen this up a little bit and turn our pieces into shape. I'm trying to turn it so that just a little bit of the board is still engaged. See how that is? And you can see how they overlap each other just barely on the end, maybe an eighth of an inch or less. Should look like a corkscrew when you're finished. <laughs> now we're going to tighten it up. Want it good and tight so these won't slip out of place. There we go. Now the last thing we need to do is to seal the end grain and just to make sure that we don't have any runs on the sides. And we'll let it cure a few hours. So now we can hang it. And be sure you don't hang it in a sheltered spot. It really needs to be where it can catch plenty of wind. Now we can sit on our patio and watch it spin. So I hope you enjoy building this wind spinner. It's a great beginner project. And also be sure to send me your comments and your questions and I will answer you. And that's going to do it for today, folks. So thanks for watching.